Welcome back to this kit factory where today there's a special project rocking up soon. Uh, as you can tell, there's a lot going on at the skid factory. There's the Trans Am, which Al's almost finished. This 50s Chevy Apache, which is a pretty cool car. It's powered by a 1UZ, same as a Fairlane. It will be on the skid factory at a later date, not just at the moment. Just getting a few uh, jobs done for it for, to be roadworthy. There's a 2018 tuned by STI BRZ, which Al's fitting a turbo kit, which they should have had from factory. Um, those turbo kits make them an absolutely awesome car. The car that's rocking up today is a mate of ours. He's been a mate of ours for a long time. Um, of course, if, you mate, if you're a mate with Al and, and the car's coming to this kid factory, it's obviously going to get something stupid done to it. The car is already pretty silly. It's an unfinished project, so he's bringing it up to us so that we can finish it off. So let's check it out. Toyota goodness. You the, get a big, very, the very best of Toyota in one package. You get a big smile on your face. Look at it, dude. Is that diesel? Oh, it was a diesel. This is a 1978 BJ40 uh, Land Cruiser. Uh, this is my mate Nathan's car. His grandparents bought this brand new. They did three laps of Australia in it. Had a, a little three litre B four cylinder diesel in it. Um, like a little truck engine they were, so they were super reliable. Clattering away for its whole life. So um, he uh, inherited it or bought it off his grandparents in 1992 or something like that. And um, sort of campaigned it for years. Ended up blowing up the old uh, B engine from, from abuse most likely. Then he threw a 253 Holden V8 in it, which is a uh, sort of a, a entry level V8 engine from Holden. Um, campaigned it with that for a while. Put a 308 in it, which is like the big brother, five liter engine. Campaigned that for a while, put another 308 in it. Thrashed that for a while. And uh, finally, years later, it's got the engine that, that's in it now. Um, this engine's got a bit of history as well, especially with me. Let's have a look. Woody. Yo. Can you move the Trans Am so I can get to the Chimera to move the Commodore so we can put this in the shed? Easy done, mate. Sweet. Keep coming. Keep coming, bro. Yeah, that'll do ya. So this old girl looks pretty standard on the outside. It's got the the regulation uh, paint that all of these um, old girls had on them. Uh, perfect for going out in the bush and chasing crocodiles. Um, it's not, real, it's not really very standard though. It's, it's got a pretty much a bit of everything out of every Toyota Land Cruiser you've ever, ever seen. Uh, bits and pieces, it's got an extended wheelbase um, to fit the gearbox, which is a A440F, um, I think it is, out of a late 60 series, early 80 series. So it's basically like an overgrown A340 box that you would see in, in most Toyotas that have got an auto, uh, Azen, uh, gearbox that's been custom adapted to the engine which we'll talk about in a second uh, it's got a 75 series rear end so HJ75 whatever Land Cruiser Ute they have disc brakes which is obviously going to need uh, so that's been adapted into the rear there um, lots of custom stuff all Toyota sort of adapted around the idea of making it uh, handle this so uh, it's got disc brakes in the front and everything, obviously. Um, but the big business is in here, and you probably, if you're a train spotter, have noticed this. 
and yes, that is tr that is actually true. That's what's in there. So Woody's going to jump up and take some shots of it because it's a bit high at the moment. But um, basically, that's a Toyota V12 out of a Toyota Century. Um, that engine was originally fitted to a Subaru Liberty or Legacy, if you're from everywhere else in the world, um, by me for another mate years and years ago, probably, I don't know, maybe 2012 or something, I think we did it. Um, that's kind of where the Skid Factory name came from. We used to sit around thinking of dumb shit to do and then actually do it instead of not like most people do. So I got this V12 engine. Um, we made it to a Turbo 400 um, GM Auto. We put twin turbos on it, twin TDO 625Gs, I think they were. Uh, put a custom plenums, did, just made it fit. It was a ridiculous idea, and but we did it anyway. So eventually the, the, um, the transmission let go on it because the, I think the auto was a bit slippy. Uh, the um, converter was a bit slippy because um, I got a converter made for it and I told him it was a twin turbo V12 and obviously that meant it wasn't very torquey and that's sarcasm for you by the way. So anyway, it, it, it had a, the stall was just endless. It was quick on the road and it did a mid 11, I think on the strip. Uh, but anyway, eventually destroyed the transmission and um, he uh, sort of dummy spat it and gave up on it at the time. And Nathan ended up with the, with the engine. Uh, engine's fine. It, it handled the power. It didn't blow up. It's still going now. So obviously that's the engine that you want in your short wheelbase Land Cruiser with um, skinny tyres because crocs move real quick and you need to keep up with them. So um, this is what he, what he stuck in there. So it's kind of an unfinished project as you can see. He's got a lot on. He's a busy dude. He's got bulk kids, stuff to look after. So it's, bring it here, we'll sort it out. So that's what we're going to do. So if you're not familiar with the 1GZ, it's Toyota's only V12 engine they've ever made. It was only for the use in the Century limousine, I guess you could call it. Maybe you'd call it a town car or something like that. Basically sort of an, an executive express. Um, it's a beautiful, smooth, torquey engine. Um, it is not two 1JZs joined together. That is just the internet talking. It is its own engine and it's probably more closely based on the um, V6 engines that were in late model Camrys and um, four wheel drives and that sort of thing, uh, FJ Cruisers. It's, it's, it's more like two of them joined together in the middle rather than two six cylinder straight sixes. Uh, so it's, it's a fairly modern engine even by um, today's standards, even though it's probably 20 years old now. So I, I haven't seen this engine for many, many years. It's been uh, sort of hidden away in Nathan's shed. Um, he's been sort of sort of tinkering with it off and on um, when he gets a chance. But it's, um, <laughs> it's a lot of custom stuff going on here. We, we kind of just made it up out of bits and pieces back in the day. Um, the manifolds have been just made out of, welded onto the end of the original runners. This used to go out into a plenum, then up into another plenum. So it was a three-stage manifold. It was fairly strange. And it ended up in a pair of drive-by-wire, sort of drive-by-wire throttles. They were like a sort of like a stepper motor throttle body, which is kind of weird, and pretty much nothing runs that. So we got rid of all that and just um, ran a couple of Subaru throttles because you have them lying around. Um, we made up all this... Um, set up to operate the throttles off a single cable. It's since been adapted to, that's actually the kick down cable or the throttle TV valve is the, is the right word for it, um, to, to the transmission. So um, manifolds are just old faithful logs and they've got uh, oil cooled only TDA6s on them. And that was just for simplicity in cost they were very cheap uh, it obviously doesn't need much boost to make it 
uh, work because uh, it's a pretty big engine and it's already a, was a, a hugely torquey engine. That was what it was for. It was probably a three-ton car towing around smooth and quiet. So um, I reckon I'll probably do the job in this very light, mostly fiberglass four-wheel drive. So our job is to make this car be on the road instead of on a trailer or parked in the corner of a shed with chickens in it. Um, it has had some work done on it in the last five years or so. Um, this is the wiring job that was done on it. Um, it's comprehensive and uh, surely enough, it just probably needs a zip tie around it and it'll be, it'll be ready to go. Um, so yeah, obviously it, it needs that car wired as well. I don't know what this is all about, but it's junk. Um, the engine wiring, the engine is still wired as it was in, in the um, Subaru, uh, but I, I think I'll redo it just to um, modernise it a bit, make sure it's still in, in usable order, because I can't really remember what we did to it because it was a very long time ago and there may have been some lemon squashes involved in the, in the manufacture of it. Um, <laughs> I've, I've used uh, Subaru igniter packs, probably because I had 20 of them in a drawer we might change that just there's all sorts of things we can do just to bring it up to standard so it's going to be reliable um, the last thing you want when you're out chasing crocs is for your truck to break down because they will kill you and eat you so it needs to be reliable and that's what we're going to make it uh, so i've got uh, my mate anthony's going to come in and do the car wiring because i have an aversion to actually rewiring cars i love wiring engines up but i just can't get my head around wiring cars I just some, for some reason don't like it so he loves it he's off he's actually wiring up the Bedford at the moment so um, I've already dropped him into the greatest mess ever doing that so I reckon he's up to this as well so um, he's going to turn up at some stage and do the vehicle wiring which is going to be really simple it's just going to be everything it needs to actually run lights wipers that's about it um, croc grabbing handle, big arm coming out the side here. Um, that's all it really needs to do what it's got to do. Um, I'll rewire the engine. We'll integrate it into, I think we've got a, a waterproof fuse box set up, fuse and relay box. We'll integrate it all into that and connect up everything else that needs to be connected, get that auto working. Um, and I'm sure there's heaps of other stuff because, you know, the last 5% takes 90% of the time, but we'll get into it and we'll get it done and get it out there chasing crocs like it should be. Tune in next week. We'll start pulling it a bits and checking out what we've got to deal with. Uh, if you like this sort of lunacy, hit the subscribe button, comment below, tell your mates, get them to subscribe. We love it. We like lemon squash. We need to afford it. Help us out. Thanks for watching.